Hi everyone, I'm presenting to you today from far north Queensland in Australia and the title of my presentation is Psychosocial Cancer Care for Indigenous People and today my presentation will provide an outline and some considerations for providing psychosocial care to Indigenous people affected by cancer. Before I begin my presentation, as an Indigenous person, it's important to acknowledge the lands in which we're holding this meeting and pay respects and acknowledgement to the First Nations people of Treaty 7 and the Métis Nation of Zone 3. I'd also like to acknowledge my Indigenous colleagues co-presenting with me today. My Indigenous connections to the land and Mother Earth come from my mother. We belong to the second largest Indigenous nation in Australia the Kamilaroi Nation. On the right hand side of this slide, you can see our Aboriginal totems that were handcrafted by local artists in remembrance of significant people, the dream time and customs of the Kamilaroi people. Indigenous people in many parts of the world suffered disproportionately worse health, poverty and shorter life expectancy. In Australia, the life expectancy of Indigenous people is around 10 years lower than non-Indigenous Australians. The gulf in life expectancy can generally be attributed to a range of factors, particularly socioeconomic ones. However, these vast differences also point to deficiencies in providing accessible, effective and appropriate health services for Indigenous Australians. Globally, a growing body of evidence has continually reported significant disparities in cancer outcomes in terms of incidence and mortality between Indigenous and non-Indigenous populations, both within and between countries. Evidence from across the world also indicates Indigenous people have a higher incidence of cancers that are largely preventable, such as colorectal, cervical and lung cancers. This graph presents Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australian cancer mortality rates over time. And you can clearly see the gap between Indigenous in the orange are increasing compared to non-Indigenous rates in the red, which are reducing over time. The reasons for these increasing cancer mortality rates for Indigenous Australians is multifaceted and it includes Indigenous patients presenting much later with more advanced disease, but it also includes issues around having access to culturally safe care and receiving even cancer care that is less concordant. Significant disparities in cancer care exist for Indigenous people across the world, requiring targeted and tailored outreach to overcome the myriad of challenges to closing the equity gap and these challenges have been acknowledged in recent years by WHO and the UN. Psychosocial care is an important aspect of cancer care in ensuring the psychological and emotional well-being of the cancer patient are recognised, addressed and managed during all phases of the cancer care continuum. The psychosocial needs of people can vary and are affected by many factors including cultural and socio-demographic variables. Identifying and addressing the psychosocial needs of Indigenous cancer patients, as well as the needs of their carers, can assist in achieving health equity for Indigenous people. In Australia, we've developed a national set of cancer control indicators to monitor and report on various cancer-related measures and outcomes. These indicators go across the cancer continuum of care from prevention and screening through to diagnosis, treatment, psychosocial care, research and outcomes. The national psychosocial indicators in Australia include the patient experience and screening for distress. Psychosocial care is important, but it's an often overlooked area for Indigenous cancer patients and research is limited. In our research, we reported 71% of Indigenous Australian patients had at least one unmet supportive care need. More recently, there is interest in measuring the patient experience and a variety of patient experience tools have been developed. In developing these measures, 
we do need to consider and recognise the patient journey for Indigenous cancer patients is a collective one with respect for the individual and the cultural perspectives being a key driver of Indigenous patients' engagement with cancer care. To date, despite increased screening for distress in cancer care, there is limited evidence of the levels of distress and screening amongst Indigenous peoples. In our Australian study, we reported one in three Indigenous cancer patients experienced significant levels of distress. We also need to acknowledge, however, that distress for Indigenous cancer patients may also originate from a lack of respect and acknowledgement of their cultural beliefs and values, or from the experiences of racism within the clinical setting. For this reason, it is essential that optimal cancer care incorporates physical and psychological care that considers the cultural and linguistic background of the patient through the disease trajectory and into survivorship. In Australia, we have tumour specific optimal cancer care pathways. Each pathway identifies specific points and recommended care at each stage for the specific tumour types. The arrow going down the page says supportive care needs should be assessed at every step of the pathway and referral to appropriate health professionals or organisations when required. There are some specific references to Indigenous people and referring to health professionals who possess knowledge specific to the psychological needs of Indigenous people. However, a critical question is how do we know or assess if health professionals have expert knowledge in this area, particularly given the dearth of Indigenous health professionals working in cancer care? These are some suggested actions. The challenge is who should action these, how do we measure and who monitors these recommendations? And most importantly, how do we assess if implementing these reduce the barriers and help improve cancer care and cancer outcomes for Indigenous people. In Australia, we have two key um, policy documents. The first is the National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Cancer Framework. And this framework provides strategic direction in cancer control with the aim of improving cancer outcomes for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. And more recently, the first of its kind is the Optimal Care Pathway for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. It identifies approaches to quality care for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people with cancer to improve their cancer treatment, their experience and their clinical outcomes. We're very fortunate in Australia to have these frameworks and Indigenous specific policies and guidelines, but policy development, priority setting and resource distribution depend on comprehensive and accurate data. It is therefore critical that we identify Indigenous people in cancer care to ensure appropriate policies, programs and the allocation of resources. If we don't identify our Indigenous patients, any disparities that may exist for Indigenous people will remain completely invisible. Focusing more closely on psychosocial aspects of cancer care, we know there are policies about the routine use of short screening tools such as the distress thermometer or other visual analog scales like the ESAS and that these have been implemented across the world as a way to rapidly identify patients reporting levels of distress and enabling referral to psychosocial oncology services. Quality of life and well-being measures and supportive care needs tools have also been developed for use in cancer care. I'd like you now to take a moment to reflect on the psychosocial screening and assessment tools you currently use and ask yourself, do they take into account the cultural issues or factors that are valued by and are important to Indigenous people? I would also like to ask you if these measures and psychological services take into account Indigenous people's concepts of their health and well-being, 
or the way they perceive cancer or receive and process, process information about their cancer diagnosis and treatment or how they cope with their illness. Indigenous people define health more broadly than just the physical state of the individual or the absence of disease. Indigenous concepts of health are holistic, they require a balance of elements, and one's health may be dependent on the well-being of the family and all the community. So to optimise the benefits of cancer care for Indigenous cancer patients, care providers need to understand these concepts of health. Screening Indigenous patients for their unmet supportive care needs is important as they often present with complex health and wellbeing issues. Support needs may vary across cultures and it's important we understand Indigenous patients' needs and their preferences for support throughout the cancer journey. From the very few studies that have been published, it's clear that the unmet supportive care needs for Indigenous patients are mostly around issues around access to care, financial resources, and cultural needs, many of which can be addressed if we systematically assess Indigenous patients' supportive care needs. I'm sure we all know that routine screening of supportive care needs has the potential to improve cancer care and outcomes for all cancer patients, but in this case, Indigenous people. Gaining a better understanding of the level of unmet needs can assist policy and service development, and it also has the potential to reduce disparities in cancer outcomes. However, in doing so, accurate and culturally relevant assessment needs assessment tools are required. And in Australia, we know existing tools did not capture the culturally specific needs of Indigenous people. And from one study we conducted, we found that existing supportive care needs were not suited for people with low literacy, that the wording was culturally inappropriate, and some items were redundant. And there were some needs, particularly Indigenous and practical needs, were not covered in existing tools. So in Australia, we adapted an existing tool to ensure it included the culturally specific needs important to Indigenous people. This new supportive care needs assessment tool for Indigenous people includes four domains, physical and psychological, hospital needs, information and communication needs, and practical and cultural needs. And when we use this tool in clinical care across Queensland, we found 60% of Indigenous cancer patients had at least one moderate to high unmet need, with most being in the physical and psychological domain. When we piloted this tool across three different Australian states and in very different cancer care settings, patients across these settings said they liked being asked about their needs and they reported that being asked about their needs were helpful in addressing their concerns and unmet needs that would otherwise go unaddressed. When we asked cancer care staff who used the tool what they thought, and almost all agreed the supportive care needs assessment tool for Indigenous cancer patients was useful and feasible to use in cancer care. And they said it picked up things that I thought would never have come up until we're at a real crisis point. And another said, I think it's also a good opportunity for staff who may not be as experienced or, you know, trained for working with people of Indigenous background to have this sort of specific tool to use. To support the implementation of the Supportive Care Needs Assessment Tool for Indigenous people, we've developed an online culturally appropriate training module for cancer care staff. I'd now like to focus on the caregivers of Indigenous cancer patients. And despite their valuable role, there is little research on the needs of carers themselves and the experience of caring for an Indigenous cancer patient. Caregivers rarely receive any information or training on how to care 
and they themselves may have unmet psychosocial needs. Research investigating the psychosocial needs of caregivers of Indigenous cancer patients is important because of the cultural differences in Indigenous people's perceptions and understanding of cancer and their preferences for receiving and processing information about cancer and the ways in which they cope with the disease. Understanding and meeting carers' needs may help to improve outcomes for Indigenous cancer patients. Our team has conducted a systematic review to explore the caring burden of caregivers of Indigenous cancer patients. And this was published late last year in the Journal of Psychosocial Oncology Research and Practice. The outcomes of this systematic review revealed that caregiver roles and experiences relate to five overarching domains, information, support, communication, managing caregiver roles, and navigating complex and alienating health systems. I'd now like to turn our attention to quality of life and well-being of Indigenous people. And whilst existing tools, quality of life measures and well-being indicators are robust instruments and indicators, they are underpinned by biomedical models and not holistic conceptualizations of health and well-being. They also lack the inclusion of items that are important to us as Indigenous people, like family and culture, and they don't consider the challenges we face or our experiences that stem from the impacts of colonisation, intergenerational trauma, racism and socioeconomic disadvantage. However, we do acknowledge that having appropriate and accurate wellbeing measures are important. They help inform patient and clinical decision making, service delivery and policy development, which can all ultimately improve patient outcomes. However, we must remember that well-being is culturally bound and that robust well-being measures are needed and they must be culturally relevant. To address the gap in access to culturally appropriate quality of life and well-being measures, we aimed to develop a nationally relevant instrument to measure the well-being of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander adults. And whilst this research is not cancer specific, it is highly relevant to Indigenous cancer patients. The methods we used to develop the What Matters to Adults Wellbeing measure was underpinned by the guiding principles that Indigenous voices and perspectives are prioritised and privileged throughout all aspects of the research process. And you can see that indicated by the dark bold blue line across the bottom of the page. Our team includes Indigenous researchers and at each stage of the project we were guided by an Indigenous project advisory group and an Indigenous research group. To date the measure has been informed by the experiences and preferences of over 1,625 Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander adults and you can see from this slide the development process is continuing and it is iterative and extensive. Our What Matters to Indigenous Adults measure at this point in time can give a summative score, but we are in the process of developing a preference-based scoring version. And the current measure includes 32 items with four response categories. This slide shows the 10 dimensions included in the new What Matters to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander adults wellbeing measure. And on the right hand side, you can see some example wellbeing statements. Balance and control is the dimension. And within that, there are a couple of items as examples here. I have enough control over my life and I feel happy. Spirit and identity is another dimension. And one of the statements in this is, my spiritual connections keep me strong. So you can see the other examples of the well-being statements in this measure. But most importantly, the dimensions and the statements included are those that are valued by and important to 
Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander adults. Today I've presented an overview of a few aspects of psychosocial care and how we measure it with regards to Indigenous people. There is still much work to be done to improve cancer outcomes and the psychosocial care for Indigenous people. And one thing we can all do is know who your Indigenous patients are and then consider any language, cultural and other challenges these patients may face in accessing good quality cancer care. Research in psychosocial aspects of cancer care is much needed for the Indigenous populations. And without it, the inequalities in cancer care will remain for Indigenous people. Most importantly, we also need to publish the evidence about the strategies that work. And finally, it is imperative that the voices and perspectives of Indigenous people must be embedded in the research and services we provide if we are to make a real difference in cancer outcomes. Lastly, I'd like to acknowledge the funding that I've received to support the work that I've done to date and the studies that I'm currently conducting. I'd also like to thank the organisers for the opportunity to present to you today and give you an overview of some of the work, the work that we've been doing in Australia. Thank you.